Tattoos are probably one of the most controversial topics in a household. You have parents who don't want their kids to get it. You have the my body is my temple group of people. You have the people who are straight up ink heads who will get a new tattoo yearly. You got sleeves, you got full body tats, you got face tats, fist tats, hands tats, chest tats, back tats, tramp stamps. <laughs> but overall, there's there's so many different levels of tattooing and controversy when it comes to tattooing and what a tattoo means, what it doesn't mean. And ultimately, it's something that for me, growing up in the inner cities of Harrisburg, my first tattoo was something that kind of just defined me. For the tattoo culture, that's what tattoos are to them. With reality show and multiple shops, the Black Ink Crew is the culture of tattooing in the Black community. So the difference in this crew is Caesar and Suzette started a relationship during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Most people couldn't stand being around each other during the pandemic. They grew closer. Suzette is a former video vixen turned real estate agent and is killing it in Atlanta. And Caesar is, again, the owner of Black Ink and has built an empire from the dirt basically, and is now expanding into bigger and better ventures. So I wanted to talk to Caesar and Suzette about both of their fields, both of their entrepreneurship endeavors, and what they want to build and grow and what they want people to take from this show. I think that's important. It's, it's not just reality TV, it's a message in there. For those who know, we do touch on the shop robbery that happened and get a little details about that. My personal feelings, you'll find out. So, as always, kick back, relax. Welcome to another episode of Swab Sessions with Caesar and Suzette from Black Ink. All right, so before we jump into the interview, you know we gotta get popping with a lot of the business stuff. So in the meantime, while we're getting that situated, make sure you guys are subscribing to the magazine. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that like button. Turn your notifications on so that you can see when we post new videos, new content. Share with your friends, your circle, your family, coworkers. I don't care who you share with, just share. Share, share the video um share other videos watch other videos and leave comments man let us know what you guys think about um the interview about other interviews what kind of direction you want us to go into if you are enjoying what you're watching thus far all those things are important because we want to make sure that we're giving you the content that you're looking for um the magazine does have a mobile application check that out on both android and apple platforms Check out our podcast on all streaming networks under Suave Sessions. You'll be able to find it there. And we will definitely make sure that we continue rocking with you guys with a lot of content, a lot of dope interviews. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming up. So all that said, let's get to it. You guys, you built the empire starting from a tattoo shop. Like what? Just for me to get some background information, like what inspired that? Was it was that always the expectation? Um, no, it really wasn't an expectation. When we all came together forming Black Ink, it was more of a, we need to get ourselves out of the hood, basically. Like it was just a group of friends just trying to make it, and it just it formulated to this. Like none of us, when we first started this, would ever think that we was gonna be on a reality show that this reality show will take off like this, that we would be household names. And honestly, it's just a blessing. Yeah. So when you, were you all tattoo artists individually before this? Um, I mean, not all of us were tattoo artists, you know? Some of us were tattoo artists. Some of us, you know, they had jobs in the shop, friends of the shop. So it mostly, it just created a vibe because, you know, there's people that's around you almost every day. 
they're trying to figure out stuff we're trying to all figure out as a collective and thank god we god figured it out for us yeah nice all right so um i'm watching and like seeing the expansion um one of the big things that i've caught up on is you had to shut down your shop in new york during COVID, and Mm -hmm move here to Atlanta and establish that. How did that, how did that work out? And what made you say Atlanta's gonna be it? I mean, I always had, I always had something for Atlanta and I had a shop here prior to the COVID. A lot of people don't know that, but I had a hit a shop here for like three years already. And then when everything was going on, I was already in the mindset that I was moving to Atlanta, but when COVID shut everything down and Atlanta was the only thing open, I mean, <laughs> it basically, literally, <laughs> it's a no brainer. Like, you know what? I'm going my ass down to Atlanta. And plus, my crew, they have families, and, you know, there ain't no pension for tattoo artists. There's no 401k, there's no relief package, there's nothing. So, yeah. as soon as stuff started opening up, I took me and my crew down here and we made a home for ourselves. Yeah. And speaking of home, you, you moved everybody to the same house. Um, yeah. <laughs> look, looking back on that, would you would you do that again? Or is that like a one time understood mistake? That was a one time understood mistake. You know, <laughs> I listened to my lady, you know, and she don't know these guys like I know them. And, you know, put it like this. <laughs> I didn't get my deposit back. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> so that enough said. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah, I'm sorry. The rug, the rug everything. Oh, baby. Like <laughs> it's just it's not it's not coming back. Nah. <laughs> it's hilarious. All right. So you two, you the two of you have you done something that most people have not been able to do during a pandemic that's starting a relationship a lot of relationships ended but few started um how did that happen was it always something there i'll let you answer this one no smart man <laughs> <laughs> no i mean we were friends for three years and you know pretty much he shot his shot and we kind of just let it play out if that makes sense yeah you know? We, we both had our own stuff going on, you know, him with the ladies, me with the fellas. So it was just more so, I guess, something fun to do in the beginning until you really like start spending a lot of time with a person and really like, okay, like I, I, I could see myself doing this. Yeah. That's the, that's on my end, you know, I don't know what made him shoot his shot, you know, but. No, it was, it was, a, it was a boring Monday night, you know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Monday night, huh? So, is it is it challenging being two entrepreneurs in different spectrums in a relationship? Uh, not for I me. Mean, I think I think it works because we're not in the same. Like, I don't work for him. He don't work for me. He has his business. I have my business. And because of the way both of our businesses are structured, we're actually able to spend a lot of time together. And I think yeah. that was a factor too. Like if I had like a nine to five or I had to be like at a remote location to work, I don't think our relationship will have gone as far as it did. You know, as yeah. far as like being able, we wouldn't have had that time, you know? So yeah. I think that that definitely um, what makes us stronger because we're able to pour into each other. So I learned from him, he learns from me and it works. How did you how did you get to real estate? Like what was what was the thought process going into real estate? What encouraged you for that? I was actually behind the bar and I had you know how when someone steps into a room, it's like they have this powerful presence about them. Yeah. So it's like the whole energy shifted to this this lady that had walked in the club. I was bartending that one day. And she just kind of just sat there and watched me for a little while. I'm from New York, so you know, we don't really think real estate unless you're a part of that crowd already, you know? But no one in New York says, I want to grow up and be a real estate agent or I want to do real estate. So coming out here, it wasn't really a thought either until 
that lady approached me at the bar and she pretty much was like, you know, I, I you got good interaction with people. You ever thought about doing real estate? And I was like, real estate? She's like, yeah. And I'm just like, no, never thought about it. Like, what would I be thinking about? <laughs> you yeah, know, and she just was like, I think you should look into it. And then um, I still didn't give it no thought, you know, after that, but I seen the same lady again at a video shoot um, sometime after that. So that's when it was like, okay, it's not a sign. It's, it's too much of a coincidence that I'm bumping into the same person that's telling me to do this, you know? And, yeah. and she was actually a broker and she had her own firm. So the second time we, we seen each other, we spoke a little bit more and she just was pretty much like, I want you to get your license, come work for me. You know, I think you'll do great. That is what Atlanta is, Atlanta's real estate. So that's pretty much when I started, you know, doing my research and I go, okay, she's not playing. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> and, yeah, but that's what, that's pretty much what started my journey with that. Nice. And Caesar says something um, like all my friends when I'm I told them that they kind of was like exactly. He was saying you can't sell a house from a virtual showing, right? And it's it's hard, but it's like that's what people are trying to do now. But you have to be like face to face to really connect with people and get that sale done. I mean, not really. Um, even now, like when I'm out of town, I have a showing assistant. So I don't physically have to be there to show houses. Um, yeah. You know, I just try to make it to the closing majority of the time. But yeah, honestly, in Georgia, I mean, it really depended on the agent, but that didn't really start. Like I wasn't one of the agents that was not showing houses because of COVID. You know, of yeah. course, took the necessary precautions. Um, of course, they recommended the virtual tour, but it's like if you buying a house, it's a different feel from pictures and videos and actually walking into a house and and feeling the energy of the house and really just walking around trying to see if you could, you know, picture you and your family in that house. Yeah, you it's know? very so, different. Yeah, very different. All right, and Caesar, I I was told you are expanding Black Ink to international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am going to open up in Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm trying to start that by the end of the year. I have it open beginning of the year. But I'm really working towards that. Like, I really, I want to become international Caesar. It got a nice ring to it, international. It, it, does, it does have a ring. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, people don't understand once you start moving around the world and stuff, you start understanding that America is just a small percentage of the world. You feel me? Very There's small. Such a bigger, bigger world out there. And once you start really getting out there in that world, that's why I feel like you'd be able to, to get that wealth that you really mm -hmm. want to acquire. Sitting in America, just taking the crumbs that they give you ain't enough for anybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Are you... Yeah, for real. <laughs> Are you... Are you taking any of the team members to Jamaica? Is anybody going to relocate? Or are you going to set up a whole new team down there? Oh. No, 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 no. Yeah. They all okay. stay in America. No, 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 no. no, no, no. They stay. <laughs> I know there's some type of international law or something that I can't remember. I know them. Something, but no, no. I'm I'm going to hire locally. Yes. Somebody going to break something. Yeah, somebody going to break some type of rule. And yeah. And I don't need no diplomats, no nothing in my business. Nah, absolutely not. Um, I guess for both of you, what is it? What does it do for you to kind of look back and see where you came from and see where you're at now, and all the potential and possibilities in front of you? For me, to look back, the only time I look back is just to reference how far I came. Like it's just sometimes it is amazing for both of us because. I be thinking about like even five years ago, how yeah. far I came in that that little bit of time. And I'm just so excited because there's just so many opportunities that's opening up. And you know, as you get older with more experience, more stuff that you want to do. Like I know in like a couple more years, probably like three, four more years, and once I get all these shops done, I'll probably sell off the company or just keep it just because, but I know I'm gonna be on to something else, man, something bigger and better. Yeah. Um, for me, it's definitely motivational, especially when, you know, when it comes to leveling up, you really have to trust your instincts, um, trust your vision, 
even if that means, you know, pissing people off or leaving people behind. So that, I would say that was the biggest lesson for me because had I listened to the circle that I had around me at that time, I wouldn't be where I'm at now, you know? And then I look back at where they're at now and it's just like, it's just a constant reminder, like, listen, if you have a plan, if you have a vision, just go. Yeah. So speaking of leaving people behind, um, you had an incident and your shop got robbed. Um, I don't know how far you want to go into this. You you find out, or you get the the footage, and you say this is what's going on, and you see it's like one of your older friends and closest friends that you feel is the one that did it. What's going on, yo, bro? Uh, we gotta talk to y'all. We got some disturbing news. Disturbing news. Yeah, we got some very disturbing news. Who take my mask off for this? We talked to Walter about shot being robbed. We saw the footage. Show it to his head. Oh, no. Oh, Walter. What do you mean, oh, Walter? What? See this little thing right here? That's, 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 that's that right little there. thing right, right there, there, right? Mm-hmm. See this little person? Yeah. Look where they go. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Look. Oh, no. Look, look. Oh, my God. Just look at the wolf. I don't want to say it's wall, but it kind of, sort of looks like wall. I just wish I could see the person's actual face before I can say for certain that it's goddamn Walter. It took everything in me not to put hands on that kid, bro. Told me to my face. He took some money out the register, but didn't break into the shop. What? How did he admit it? He's not admitting to the break-in, but he did That's take money him, out of the register. It's him. That's him, like, bro. Even if you didn't do the break-in, like, you still stole. It's equivalent. Yo, why would he go out like that? Remember when we was younger, he stole our wishes at the wishing well. What? Yes. Yes. We had a wishing well. We used to throw quarters in there, trying to make something of he ourselves. He took wild quarters out that All the quarters. He left nothing. He took the, the water out of his wishes. Stolen dreams? Yes. Dreams, dude. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna say it first. Walter's banned. Maybe the pandemic hit that Man, hard, I'm not bro. Jacking that like we all come from the same place. We all live by the same code. And stealing is at the top of the list of what you don't do. Mm-hmm. Um, when I saw it, again, being from, I'm from Pennsylvania. So like just Northeast mentality was like, dude, that's beyond disrespectful. And it's hard to come back from that. Like, it hurts. And you saw, you can see the emotion in your face when it happens. Like, when you see it, it is him. It's like, the emotion in your face is almost like it drains you. How do you, because I haven't finished yet, were you able to um, fix that? Or is this just really something that right now you just need, you need that space? Um, See, it happened, it ain't happened that long ago. But the headspace I was in is different than the headspace I'm in now. And I just feel like with me and him, it's like, I just, I don't think it's any coming back from that. Because it's like, it's not even about the money. It's more of the principle behind it. Yeah. Like, you got to understand, if you got almost a 20 year relationship with somebody, you're not gonna risk it over anything. Not no money, not nothing. I just feel like at this day and age, you gotta start calling a spade a spade. And sometimes our biggest problem is basically recognizing when sometimes a character flaw could lead to something detrimental. Yeah. And with me, I always look at other people's history and how it was always the person that was next to them that they seen signs of betrayal or what they'll do to just not respect their friendship or brotherhood. And yeah. I had to learn from that lesson. I'm not saying he would, but I can't chance he would. You feel me? So I, 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 I'm to the point to, to say and say, I always had love for Walter, but We'll never be how we was, so we might as well just let bygones be bygones. Yeah. And it, like, even you can see with um, 
Ted, it was like almost the same thing. So it's, I guess one of my friends was like that, I was like, it hurts on different levels because it's like, it's personal and then it's business. And you're saying like, you did this, but you didn't do that. But it's like, you still did it. So I was like, then it hurts because it's like, you could have just came to me and said, this is what I'm going through. And I would have had you. Right. I may have like said something to you about having to have you again, but the fact that you, you. <laughs> yeah, I still, I still would have had you. It's you just, I was like, like that. that's what I'm saying. Saying it's like, yo, all you had to do is say, yo, bro, I'm fucked up. No one would have right. knew it would have been between me and you. And yo, here you go. I wouldn't even ask for it back. Yeah. That's it's I I, I no. Nah. For me, I was just like, I can't. Yeah, nah. <laughs> because it's like that's that's a level of trust. And it's like it goes, it goes beyond that moment. It's like now I don't trust you with anything. So exactly. I don't want you in my house if I'm not there. I don't want you in my house and out of my sight and I'm there. It's just I can't. <laughs> You can't like, never, I lose trust in somebody, you can't get that trust back. Exactly. So, Especially not no trust that has been developed over decades. Like, you know, yeah. like, nah, nah. You knew each other. Not, <laughs> <laughs> you trying to envision it, huh? <laughs> nah, because I, I was, I, I watched and I was just like, come on, cuz, like, you ain't do that. And I was, I was, you know, I'm on my side, I'm like, that ain't him. It can't be him. I bet you it ain't him. I bet you it wasn't. And then it's like you try to start making excuses, and she was like, "Nah, he's bow legged." I was like, uh, "That ain't gonna work." But then it's like when he confessed, I was like, "Even if you didn't do two, you did one." So, and the one wouldn't have came out if two didn't happen. You wouldn't have said nothing about it. Like you still wouldn't know. Exactly, and that's that's the that's that's the part that really hurt me because it, it took something dr dramatic for me to even find that you was ripping me off like god and i don't know how long it's been going on that's the funny shit. no i was like ted please don't punch that man in his face because <laughs> <laughs> you, you you can see like when a dude post up he's he kind of posted up in that corner i was like please don't hit this man but <laughs> i mean i yeah i wish it i wish it the best like whatever whatever the best is if that's if that's distance is distance if it's later down the line it's later down the line but again you got to have boundaries with people even if they're the close ones to you right um when you two when you look at your business and like you said you're um Suzette, you're saying like leveling up when you're leveling up and both of you are doing it kind of the same way at the same time in different spheres um how do you motivate each other to stay on task and to keep pushing to do what you do is it just encouragement is it like small things big things i mean honestly it's, it's, it's almost like sec, you know second nature with us like he's an entrepreneur i'm an entrepreneur prior to the businesses like we've just always been hustlers you know so when you have a natural hustling mentality and and that's what your spirit and your energy is and you're with somebody like that you know, we bounce ideas off of each other. You know, we help each other, you know, with current crises or, you know, whatever may whatever may be going on. It's right. just like, it's, it's just weird in a way, especially because I've never experienced anything like this, you know, as far as being with the partner at how it's like every day is just a new day it's really like no ending it's like okay we work we come home to each other we go to sleep together we have fun together we make money so it's just like and we would just celebrate our one year anniversary now it's like six months later already like where's the time flowing you know yeah for real <laughs> <laughs> for real um, it's fine it's about to be the end of the summer the holidays about to roll back around it's about to be the end of the summer yeah. yeah, we just keep each other balanced. I think that's that's very important balance. Yeah. Um, ultimately, what do you want people to get from the show? Because I get different messages in there, but what do you want people to take from it outside of the art of anybody who's been watching Blacking from day one know our struggle? Like we wasn't characters that was they put together in a show that already had popularity was known in the industry or nothing people basically got to see a group of uh, of um black kids coming up in the in the ghetto of harlem 
and trying to make themselves out of each other, so ourselves. And for people to sit there and witness that and realize like, fuck just it being reality TV, this shit real life, these kids are really coming up into something. That's one of the main reasons why I keep pushing a brand because when I was younger, the people I looked up to and idolized wasn't the people that I should have been idolized. Yeah. Like, as a lot of times, I feel like I wasted doing the wrong thing because of certain things that was put on the media that made me want to inspire to be like certain people mm -hmm. or to be certain things. Yeah. See, when people, when kids come to me and say, yo, you inspire me, or you see guys who open up their own business saying, oh, bro, I'm following your blueprint. And I go through all the struggles you've been through. It's, it's inspiring to me. It makes me realize that while I mapped out to do, I'm really doing. I'm basically showing our culture, like you don't have to sit there and be in the music business. You don't have to be in the sports business to make some money. A motherfucker who just pushes ink was able yeah. to make empire out of it. So why yeah. you keep it? You know, like it's just, I just want to inspire the next generation to sit there and say, yo, man, fuck that. I'm gonna do it bigger and better this season. And I, and I think um, a good message that Black Ink represents also is to pretty much take your talents seriously. Because a lot of us have talents, you know, um, and we just don't, we don't take it serious. We don't build, we don't, we don't grow. Um, we're trying to, you know, fit into what the next person is doing or what might be popular for that moment. So I think with that, because it, 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 tattoos is like, when you think about it, you're like, huh? But to see that just off his talent, you know, his ambition, his dedication to succeed and want better, Black King. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's dope. And I wish I would have watched it a lot earlier. I wish it would have came out a lot earlier, but I mean, you can't <laughs> dictate that because it would have saved me from some tattoos that I, I don't like anymore. <laughs> but, I think we Those all got great yeah they're great opportunities for cover-ups <laughs> um <laughs> but it's i think it's it's amazing that you're you're showing the art behind the ink so it's mm -hmm. there's a lot more to it i love the episode where you did the um the tattoos for the essential workers i think that was insane like that's so dope that that was done so you know kudos to you for that um mm -hmm. and i just i i being from the hood, it's always amazing to see somebody from the hood make it and not turn their back on the hood. Right. And that just, I love that. 